have both the experience of being very invested and very involved to now have the kind of different perspective and the reflection um, to be able to articulate the athlete's voice and also be involved in the progress of the sport going forwards. Welcome to My Outdoors. My name's David Wright and today we're going to talk to Shauna Coxey. Um, she is the UK's most successful competition climber. Uh, uh, she has an MBE for her services to climbing and is the only UK climber to go on to uh, the first Olympics that uh, featured climbing. So, Shauna, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Absolutely no problem. It's an absolute pleasure. Obviously, the film's coming out and that's going to come out on the 18th. What I wanted to do was kind of just go through a little bit of the path of Shauna Coxie and her, and her, but I think your initial your initial kind of bit is probably quite well documented, um, uh, and you could probably find that. So, could you give us a kind of whistle stop tour from starting uh, starting climbing to kind of qualifying for the Olympics? Ooh, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. How long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I I started climbing when I was four years old. Um, after seeing it on the TV, which is kind of one of the reasons I'm so excited about this documentary is that climbing is going to reach more people. So yeah, to think back to there seems like a very long time ago. And I'm actually not from a family of climbers, which most people of my generation of climbing are. So my dad was incredibly supportive. He he learned how to belay. He was happy to drive me to the climbing mall and spend his entire Sunday there when I was younger. And then eventually most evenings of the week too. So yeah, I'm really fortunate to have such a supportive family. Um, and I started, so I started when I was four and then started competing at seven, uh, won my first national title at nine and then kind of joined the GB team a few years later and started competing internationally. And then when I was 16, I think it was, I started competing on the world circuit. So on the senior circuit and 18, applied for university and decided to defer for a year to see if I could make professional climbing work out. And um, I'm still yet to go to university, although I, I would like to at some point. So yeah, it worked out um, because I'm still climbing full time. <laughs> yeah. So then that kind of got up to, and, and, and people hopefully see you with the, the film, it kind of got to the point where everybody was trying to fight for this spot in the, uh, in the Olympics. And that's where the, the film kind of picks it up from. Um, and obviously reflects back on, on on your sort of previous career that you you talked about there, a very um, prestigious career. How did you feel about getting involved in the project? You mentioned you there you like to to see it get to other people, um, how or more people. How, how do you feel about the project when it came up? Yeah, you know, um, my life as a full time climber, I was always kind of quite adamant that I wanted to be able to share the sport with people beyond climbing and also really connect with my community as well. Um, the whole Olympic journey was so surreal in so many ways because I actually decided not to do the games originally and I wasn't going to go for it um, for many different reasons. And one being that it was a combined event. So we had to do bouldering, lead climbing and speed climbing, which had never been Done before it just wasn't a thing and the reason for that was that the international committee gave us one medal for climbing so we could either choose one sport or combine them so it was the right decision but as an athlete it was really hard um, and that was when I was really focused on bouldering so I'd won like multiple world cups and I was in the middle of my like second season trying to win the overall and I was kind of like this this is my world like that's not um and then eventually kind of came around to the idea that, okay, qualifying for the Olympics sounds like a pretty good challenge. Um, let's see if it's possible. Um, but there were just so many unknowns. And then actually doing the documentary, I, I'm quite reluctant to commit to doing documentaries and kind of letting people into my life because, you know, I keep a lot of things private. Like you'll notice in the documentary, my husband does not feature at all. He is real, he's not imaginary. Um, and then we don't like have cameras in the house unless it's my own film crew doing it and that sort of stuff. So yeah, it's hard for me to kind of let people in fully and trust them. And that's something that, you know, Nick from Winford did really well. He's very patient and very um, considerate of that as well. But I think with the Olympic journey, it was just so, so intense and so full on 
um yeah it was definitely I think hard to capture all of that and then hard to kind of showcase that but you definitely get a feel for what it was really like from the from the film I, I definitely agree um there's there was obviously a, a couple of intimate moments for you when you were obviously under a bit of pressure or or, or kind of had been had uh, some hard stuff going on as well, as well as kind of injury. And I'm going to talk about, we'll touch on that sort of in, in a bit, hopefully. Um, and just kind of going back a little bit, and I was going to mention it later, but you talked about the speed climbing. Uh, obviously, I, I climb a little bit, but I'm aware that there was a bit of, like you say, we, we have, we've got one medal, we have to fit it in some, we have to fit this in somewhere. But how did that look in terms of training? Because obviously I know that bouldering and yeah. even between bouldering to lead climbing, it's a, it's a different different training structure and then you add this other element and then you've got to do it all at once that's that must be yeah it was hard (laughs) um so as like I trained full-time to to win bouldering comps you know and like that was my job and it was full-on and it was intense and then suddenly you're kind of adding two new sports into this so Mm -hmm. to train across the three disciplines it's almost impossible you know to to do it and do it well because they're so different and um, bouldering and lead are sports where it's open skill you you perform and you compete on something you've never tried before so you have to be a well-rounded athlete whereas with speed it's a closed skill that climb never changes so suddenly you're training something in a much different way um like as a skill let alone the, the physical side of it as well um and I've talked a lot about kind of the training and how intense it is and how much goes into it but actually the the hardest thing for me during that time was maintaining psych and motivation for bouldering because it was a thing I loved doing but I had so little time to do it in a way that was free and creative because suddenly it was all structured and regimented and we had to fit, fit and squeeze absolutely everything in so yeah it was this huge challenge and it definitely was not easy um when you add like injury and then covid on top of that so yeah, yeah it was an interesting time that's for sure <laughs> but uh, when you you don't regret is it would it be not at all no yeah, no, I wouldn't yeah um you know i really didn't know whether or not i wanted to try and get to the games and it was always a case of like let's see if i can qualify mm. um not let's go to the Olympics because that it seems so unknown, especially with the three disciplines, because there was no comp to look back on to see where everyone ranked against each other because it just didn't exist. Mm. Um, So at the first qualification event in, in Hachioji in Japan in August, 2019, it was like, okay, let's see where everyone's (laughs) at. Um, This is, it was so fascinating. Um, Test the water and let's see how everybody else is doing as well. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, yeah. I have no idea where I'm at. I have no idea where anyone else is at. Uh, let's just go see what happens. Yeah, cool. Um, well, obviously, you, you qualified and um, so did the, the three other stars of the, the, the upcoming film. And you must know them from just being on the circuit. I mean, you do know yeah. pretty well. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like the oldest of the, the <laughs> athletes in the film. So I've been around a bit longer than them there. Yeah. So I remember... Well, I, I know Brooke from when she was little, you know, from going and competing and spending time over in Boulder. And mm-hmm. I know her mum a little bit as well. So it's it's great to see kind of her coming into her prime. You know, it's yeah. like perfect time for her to be absolutely crushing. And yeah. uh, and then Miho and Yanya, I know them from coming onto the circuit and mm-hmm. kind of creeping into the kind of the elite end of the circuit as well. So, yeah, yeah it's it's really cool to kind of be at this point now, like kind of on the other side of my career and mm. I'm watching all these girls absolutely crushing it. So for each one of them, can you give me one or two words that would describe each one of them? Is that- oh, I don't know if I could just only <coughs> give one or two. Them. Okay, well, uh, uh, <laughs> a, a, interesting. a kind of brief <laughs> sentence on, on, on uh, describing each one of them. So, uh, so Miho, what's Miho like? Miho is um, formidable. You know, she has fought so hard to get to where she is. And the Japanese team is incredibly strong um, to excel within that team. You know, you have to be unbelievably good. Um, And Miho has proven that she is time and time again. And she's also come back from so many injuries, um, which having done myself, I know how difficult that is. So, yeah, she's just 
absolutely incredible on the wall, but off the wall as well. Um, and she's also the coolest person ever. You know, she's from Tokyo. She always has such impeccable style. And yeah, uh, she's just such a badass. Yeah. Well, yeah, you, you get that from the film and, and, and from seeing, <laughs> seeing her own. Um, Yanya then. Yeah, Yanya's, I was going to say, arguably the best competition climate that's ever lived. I don't think you'd find someone to argue with you about that. <laughs> um, you know, she is one of a kind, but she works so so hard for it and it's clear that she has something special you know you watch her on the wall and she just connects with that wall and she climbs in a way that is impressive to absolutely anybody watching but what people don't see is the work that goes in behind the scenes they don't see the hard days they don't see the dark days and of course Yanya has them she's human and I think the film kind of captures that which is a really important side to be aware of um because yes, she is the absolute queen of competition bouldering, um, but she works so hard to be there. As I say, she's not just the queen of competition bouldering. That's that's not true. The bouldering lead and the Olympic, you know, she kind of does everything. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's, she's nailed it. Um, <laughs> don't <an> undersell her. <laughs> I don't think I don't think you could as as the film reflects um, on on her, like you said, the the, the hardship she goes through, and also the the. At, at the end, when it talks about how she's the most successful sports person in the potentially in the in the world, not just uh, not just in climbing, but in yeah. across the um, um, and and Brooke, you mentioned Brooke a minute ago, but what how what's she? Are? Yeah, Brooke is adorable. She is such a kind and lovely person inside and out, and her ability on the wall speaks for itself. You know, she climbs with such grace and style. Um, and she's also really passionate about rock climbing and balancing everything in her life. She's passionate about school too. Um, and yeah, she comes from a family of unbelievable climbers. You know, she had a lot of pressure, I think, on her in, in some ways because of like where she comes from and who she kind of like what her history is but she's just taken such ownership of her own climbing and she's such a genuine person um yeah it's impossible not to adore and love Brooke and and obviously she's young so she's just she's probably got another Olympics in her possibly and oh yeah, yeah. she's yeah. definitely got more Olympics if she wants in her yeah, sure, yeah, yeah she's yeah. got a, a bright no. career ahead of her yeah definitely um so the the you mentioned you mentioned it again prior, uh, previously, but you, uh, injury uh, operations and recovery were, were shown in the uh, in the film. How did that how did that affect you? So, I suppose physically uh, you could see it, but mentally as well. Uh, how did that affect you in the run up to the games? Yeah, I mean, I've been through quite a few injuries in my career. I've had a, a few surgeries and a lot of other injuries as well and I think each injury teaches you a lot about your body but also about your mind and your resilience um you know it was challenging in the run-up to the games because of covid because with lockdowns not being able to access a gym or physio kind of I'd never rehabbed from injury like that before as nobody had um no. so it presented unknown challenges which it did for everyone in any sport trying to get to the games and you know for anyone kind of in the world at that time um so yeah it was a lot of unknowns um and a lot of kind of bumps in the road that we didn't expect and had to navigate so yeah it was not easy but injury never is and hmm. I am always focused on coming back and kind of learning from that injury um but getting to the games, it was just kind of like one battle after another. So when I when I got to the games, my my genuine goal was to get off the ground. I was like, okay, I want to climb. Like if I can climb here, then that's success to me. But I think that actually was the hardest thing because people didn't understand that I'd gone from finishing third and winning a medal in the qualification to being entirely content with just getting off the ground. Mm. And I think for me, that was the hardest thing to try and communicate that with people because yeah it was hard to understand mm. and do you think the film did that or were you did it is it helping to to add to to that yeah what, I think sure in some senses I think that it was it's hard 
at the time because I didn't know how to articulate that, you know, and it's mm. only really on reflection now that we're at that point. Um, and it's interesting because obviously the film's following all of all of us in our different journeys and, mm. and my journey and the intricate parts of it are part of the film for sure. But um, yeah, I think so much of the reflection happens post games uh, in that space. Um, which is when everyone should definitely have been celebrating Yanya's incredible performance, <laughs> not my getting off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> well, just everybody's got to reflect on it in their own way. Um, exactly. Well, I, I mean, I watched the games. I was in a campsite in the West of London uh, with my daughter watching the, watching the games on my iPad um, and, and certainly, mm -hmm. and, and definitely your dad kind of ref him in the film reflects on it as he's watching it. I know it's, it's hard for him probably not to be there, but uh, you just looked happy to be on the wall. Everything you there was, you obviously went yeah. and did, did your did your thing and 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 just was, was from from what I took from it, it looked like you were just happy to be there and 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 climbing hard and and being in the Olympics. I suppose is that fair to say? Yeah, and I, you know I genuinely wanted to get off the ground. So when I I did put my first speed run in, I was like, okay, I've got to the top of the speed. <laughs> Um, and it wasn't the time I wanted. It wasn't the time that I potentially could have given, but it reflected where I was at at that time on that day. And one thing um, I actually didn't mention in the film because there was so much going on at the time, but I actually tore my meniscus in my knee like four days before the Olympics. So um, when I say I didn't know if I'd be able to climb, I right up until the last minute, I didn't know if I'd be able to climb. Um, so we went into warm up on the day of the games and it was like, okay let's see what happens um and there was no doubt in my mind that I was going to try um and my physio was there like this could go a few different ways um and yeah. luckily we got through the event without making it any worse but um to, that's, that's, sorry. yeah to to get my speed runs in and then in boulder I I had a, a good round I was happy with it um so a little bit frustrated I think I could have done better on the last one but you know, it's in the past. Um, <laughs> the sports but, person in you, I love the company. Exactly. Yeah, that, that, yeah. But, uh, yeah, to be genuinely content with my performance. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that's really hard to find and to get to that space. And despite everything that had happened in the lead up to getting there, to then be content. Um, yeah, I was just so relieved and so happy that we'd managed it. Um, but again, it's something that's hard to articulate to the outside world when you've won so many events and you've been a successful athlete to then be content with 10th um it's hard for people to kind of process that yeah well, i think well i think um something that i actually picked it up on your social media earlier on you put a video on and, and you talked about fear and it was having yeah. the fear of, of, of everything and i suppose that one of them must have been the fear of not being able to claim and and then um, yeah, I mean, I was more talking about the literal fear of being on the wall and falling off. Um, yeah, yeah, well, but, yeah mean, that's true. Yeah. You know, uh, after two knee surgeries and uh, uh, my back was damaged as well, so mm -hmm. I couldn't really fall off very much, um, which as a climber is not ideal in the build up to an event. Um, so that's something that I had to overcome, which is not something I'd ever really been through much before. Mm. Um, I've never really been that scared on the wall. Um, until more recent years so yeah there was obviously the fear of the unknown I think is the main thing and whether that was not being able to compete whether that was the games not going ahead mm. even when we were on the plane flying there it was like is this really going to happen um, like are we going to get there it's like nope Covid says come home <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah so yeah we just lived in this kind of reality of nobody knows what's coming so let's just carry on until someone says don't do it <laughs> got harms. Really. um so uh, leah crane who's your your coach and, uh, and i know your uh, your friend as well um mm -hmm. uh, she's a, an accomplished climber in her own right and i know she accompanies you uh, to the games and, uh, and the, the coaching role and the support role i suppose um how did that help the fact there was no spectators your family couldn't be there I couldn't have imagined going to the games with anyone else. Um, Leo and I, we started, both started climbing at a young age and competing at a young age. So I've known her since I was like six or seven. Um, and then we competed alongside each other at World Cups. Then she 
became my training partner for a while and then eventually my coach and she's been by my side through so much you know we've been through a lot together um I guess any any friends do when you've been friends for way over 20 years um but yeah to go through that turbulent time in the lead up to the games or even the lead up to qualification you know like that moment when I qualified we'd qualified you know it wasn't just me it's my it represents my team and everyone it took to get there and I went to the games with her and, and my physio Paul who both played such an, a massive role in making it possible for me to get off the ground there yeah. um so to, to share that was yeah it was magical and I think it'll stick with us all forever yeah I, I, I'm sure it will um uh, another thing I picked up from the film, and you, it was towards the end of the film, and you said success is useful to anyone else. Um, and sorry, success is useful to anyone else, but what you learn along the way is, sorry, it's not useful to anybody else, but what you learn along the way is, what are you going to do with that? Like, how? Is... Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, you know, people like to celebrate success, and they like to talk about kind of winning medals, and it's like, well how you got there is the bit that's useful to people that's the bit that can actually make a difference it can kind of be beneficial for the next generation it can kind of help other athletes um so yeah that's the bit that I've always found really fascinating and you know people are quick to celebrate success but what does that really mean like what is it what's it going to do um and I'm, I'm not someone who's ever been big into celebrating success you know I don't have any trophies up in the house you wouldn't other than our basements converted into a climbing space but other than that you wouldn't know we were climbers <laughs> unless you go down <laughs> um yeah so I think there's a lot that I would like to do with kind of my lessons in my career but right now I'm focused on working with the athletes so I'm the president of the athlete commission for yeah. our international federation so we're looking at Paris and kind of how climbing is going to look there and then beyond Paris to LA and my job is to ensure that athletes have a voice in anything that happens within our international federation um and as you can probably tell I quite like talking so maybe a good person <laughs> to, well, that, to well, do that. That, that was going to be one of my questions what does your role in the and being appointed as the the president of athletes commission for the FSC folks what yeah so I sat as there. the I sat as the vice president of the commission for a few years mm -hmm. um, and now I'm the president, mm -hmm. which is such an honor to be voted by my peers, you know, um, and it feels like the perfect time having stepped away from competition climbing to have both the experience of being very invested and very involved to now have the kind of different perspective and the reflection um, to be able to articulate the athlete's voice and also be involved in the progress of the sport going forwards. Yeah, that's right. Um, and, and obviously, like you say, being, being recognised by your peers to, to, to be in that role must be, uh, must be pretty special. Yeah, um, it kind of all happened like just post games. So um, I applied for the role and then the vote happened at an event that I wasn't at. So yeah, it was all just in this bubble where there was so much going on. Um, but yeah, it was, it's definitely exciting and something that I am really passionate about. Uh, well, you, you mentioned it there, there was a lot of things going on. I mean, 2021 for you was a, a pretty <laughs> epic year. Um, you competed yeah. in the Olympics, top 10 in the Olympics. You retired from competition climbing, uh, became the president as it's of the AFC Athletes Commission. Uh, you got married. Yeah, you, you've been blessed with an upcoming little one. Congratulations, yeah. to your husband. Um, what does what does the future look like now? It's a great question. Yeah, twenty twenty one was that all happened in like a month as well. Um, yeah, exactly. And there yeah, are probably other things like, going on as well. They're just the kind of yeah, yeah. My husband suppose. published his book at the same time as well. It right, was yeah. just like so much happened, and it <laughs> was insane. And then. Yeah, I was mainly wondering why I was really, really exhausted post games and what was going on. Because I was like, wow, I, I've heard about post games blues, but like this is something else. And then we found out I was pregnant. So I was like, oh, makes a lot more sense now. Um, so, yeah, luckily I've been having a bit more energy of late uh, in the second trimester. So, yeah, That's it's good. good. But this year, obviously, yeah, we've got our, a little one on the way in May. Um, 
So that's, um, I think gonna come around a lot quicker than we expect. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm really excited about the kind of recovery and like the comeback post baby. Um, there's been so many incredible women both in my sport and other sports that have shown that it's possible to come back to an elite level athlete and elite level sport afterwards. And that's something I am passionate about doing um, within climbing, in rock climbing. So there's so much I want to do outdoors. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of waiting to see what that journey looks like. As, as everybody knows, pregnancy is not something you can plan for really. <laughs> there's a lot of unknowns in yeah. there. And if, yeah, if COVID's taught me anything, it's to be ready for unknowns. So um, yeah, I'm kind of just intrigued to know what that journey is going to be like. Um, and then there's so much other stuff going on as well. But uh, yeah, that's kind of the main focus. No, uh, I'd imagine that. But and then uh, obviously the the climbing future beyond that, uh, it'll be it'll be interesting. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to see what what that looks like because uh, yeah, me too. Spent, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Hopefully the little one doesn't mind being dragged around the world to different cracks. <laughs> it's a good experience. <laughs> so uh, for who's, who are we going to be looking to now for in the future, for, that, for the GB future um, climbers uh, for, for the Olympics? Who, who are we looking out for now? That's a great question. And I think it's such an interesting time, you know, because we've had so few competitions um, and with the so much focus on the games, it's kind of an exciting year this year because it's going to be like, OK, where's everybody at again? And the goalposts have moved because previously for Tokyo, you were competing under th with three disciplines, whereas for Paris, it's lead and boulder combined and speed separately. So my honest answer I don't know and nobody knows because mm -hmm. we haven't had any combined events mm -hmm. so where it's just lead and boulder so yeah it's such an exciting time for our sport and and for GB climbing you know because there's just again a lot of unknowns but there's two years before the games of events um, and qualification will start in 2023 so yeah uh, I guess that's not that long away um but yeah, I'm so excited to watch it. I'm so glad to be on the other side of the fence. <laughs> <laughs> you're the you're the, the 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 hand that has the experience now that can guide them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Um, well, Shauna, I know you're busy today, so um, I pretty much got through all my questions. So I'm I'm glad about that. I thought I was writing them last night. I thought, oh, this could this could take some time. <laughs> but, I'm but no, I'm um, really pleased to uh, to speak to you. Congratulations on the Olympics. Um, it's an amazing feat and uh, good luck to you and your family uh, good luck for thank me thank you so much sure it'll be, thanks. be awesome thanks very much thank you. see you soon in real life hopefully see you later oh, real life I forgot about real life <laughs>